I was wary of ever writing this entry because I had no wish to add to the rubbish already online, but it has come to my attention that the purpose of my work is unclear, even to people who have read and reread the books several times. Best scandal ever and best romance ever are cryptic puzzles sent in public from me to David Wolfe, as it was not possible to communicate with him any other way. His business setup prevents any female displaying inappropriate levels of intelligence from communicating directly. This is not my fault, and since it has evidently worked for him until this point, who am I to criticise him for it? A number of issues have become apparent. Although my friends understood to my detriment that my teasing him was indicative of a mysterious admiration for my arch nemesis, it appears that, particularly with American readers, the fact I have not actually said anything negative at all about him has escaped them entirely. On one hand, this demonstrates my skill in negotiating a tightrope. On the other, I would like to make something abundantly clear at the risk of your continuing to read, hoping that I plan to bury his career. Inna's function is to gently communicate a message, not to enhance the massive pile of butthurt information spread by people who decided they hated Wolf, were disappointed by Wolf, or simply spent too much on Wolf. That is entirely up to them. One of my former friends eventually came to the conclusion I was seeing something nobody else could see. This is very possible, as I can hear the books he's read when he speaks, bypassing the sense of wonder newbies probably have when he's particularly enthusiastic about something. I've also never paid him a penny for any products, instead lifting the information I required and using it elsewhere. While this is no, by no means a fair deal for Wolf, it does mean that a lot of bile I might otherwise have expressed was just not there. I just felt rather hurt by someone I thought I had got on fairly well with, albeit briefly. We appeared to share a similar perception and fascinatingly opposite way of dealing with it. So, for the benefit of the exhausted and hate fueled people who hoped to find some dirt in the books, 1. Wolf's family is irrelevant and has no reflection on him whatsoever. 2. Wolf has made a lot of mistakes. His love of his friends has not helped with this. If you picture a group of shy, hippie boys and girls pushing one to the front to do the talking, this is probably the most accurate depiction of his many errors I can show you. <coughs> Four, he is extremely talented at business. This is not terribly hippy, but you can't help it if you're given a gift. Five, linguistically, for a champion waffler in particular, he has sufficient raw talent to pique my interest. Given my prior reading list, this means he has the potential to be one of the best speakers in the world. If he actually got out of the hot tub occasionally and worked at it, he would be even better. It seems to me that despite the mistakes, the world of alternative health is fortunate to have ensnared him. Oh, um, I forget how many numbers I've got to now. We'll call this one six, okay? Six. He has not been nice or even basically polite to me. This does not negate anything else I've said. I have tried recently to update myself on what he's doing, and I still don't want to listen to it, read or look at him. <coughs> Seven, <laughs> I think. <laughs> the female issue. I don't care what he's done in the past. You have no idea what's happening between two people unless you happen to be one of them. It would appear he is a bit flighty. Who cares if it doesn't affect you? It's highly unlikely to ever affect me. Uh, and finally, yes, he probably does have a messiah complex. You would need to, to tolerate a small proportion of the crap he chooses to read about himself every day. <laughs> Given the choice between giving money to Walmart and giving money to Wolf, you're probably still better off giving it to Wolf. I am of the impression that much of the world-changing material is something he genuinely believes in, rather than an attempt to mislead. If you look around, you'll find far more subtle and expensive ways to be misled. <laughs>